If you're someone that's experiencing a friendship breakup, a romantic breakup, or even just a self-breakup where you're letting go of older versions of yourself, this simple but effective healing technique can help you process your emotions. And I'm going to show you exactly how to start your very own breakup journal. No therapy, no problem. Welcome or welcome back. My name's Tiara, and on this channel, we glow up internally and have fun doing it. Now, I've mentioned my breakup journal in a couple of my other videos, but in this video, I really want to dive deep into the topic and show you how to create your own step-by-step, -step. because I know that therapy or counseling isn't always an affordable option, but I am a huge believer that everyone deserves to heal. Everyone deserves to have some sort of outlet where they can express their emotions and feel better afterwards, and that isn't always going to be therapy, which is why I relied on a breakup journal. My goal is to help guide you through the healing journey in a cost-effective way without putting it behind a paywall or like a course or something like that. It's just something you could literally buy at the store, which is what we're literally going to do. So let's get into it. When you're freshly going through a breakup, the last thing you want to do is get out of bed. But tip number one, I need you to go to the store because we're going to go buy a journal. We want to be intentional with our healing because it's the beginning of our metamorphosis. It's a new chapter for healing and transformation. I don't want you to just go in your room and grab some half-filled journal and just be like, this will do. No. You want a journal that's specifically for this chapter of your life. I know that most YouTubers go to Target when they shop because it's bougie, but I went to Walmart because I'm cheap. Plus, I feel like you can show up to Walmart like you just rolled out of bed and nobody will judge you, and that's exactly what you need after a breakup. Hence, my outfit. The theme was breakup. Write it in the comments. Give me five stars or else. Now, your breakup journal doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. It just has to be sturdy enough to handle all your feelings. Just get whatever feels right to you, whether it's plain or something you want to decorate later. Try not to stress too much over it. One of my best friends took months to find the perfect journal, but I promise it's not that serious. The key is using it with intention because it's meant for you. So just find one that you like. Okay, so now that we've secured our journal, let's talk about how to get started with using it. My journals are more like diaries. And this is my original breakup journal, but because I didn't plan on sharing it with anyone, the names have not been changed. And out of respect for my ex, I am not going to be sharing it with y'all. I feel like the most that you guys need to know about it is that it, it was an avoidant and an anxious, and I learned a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm just going to use this fake journal to guide you. We're going to be using Satoru Gojo as my example ex. Sorry. Ooh, ooh, that made me cringe. Sorry, sorry. Even though I'm using Gojo to keep things light, trust me, okay, this process is the same whether you're healing from Gojo or someone else, like someone in real life. One of the easiest things to do after a breakup is reminisce about all the good times you had with this person. But this breakup journal is here to pop that little fantasy bubble. We're gonna take those, oh, I wish I had glasses in here, but I, mm, I probably, oh yeah, pretend that these look like roses. We're gonna take them, and we're gonna smash them to pieces. The first thing I want you to write about are all the things you didn't like about the relationship. And this isn't about being mean, okay? This is about sharing your experiences and how it made you feel. Don't look at it as your burn book. It's literally just venting. Like, for example, one time when Gojo and I were talking, I was trying to open up to him about my feelings, and he was like, you crying? You crying? No, I'm not crying. Be more polite. And it made me feel like my feelings didn't matter. And then it got me thinking. He would always make me feel like my feelings were constantly dismissed or that my experiences were invalidated, that my experiences weren't valid. And he was also very inconsistent, like he would cancel dates at the last minute and it just made me feel like I wasn't a priority to him. You see what I mean? Even though it was a fake scenario, like you get what I mean, right? You see what I mean, right? Look at these other examples. This is where you stop putting your ex on a pedestal and start seeing things clearly. By getting these feelings down on paper, you're letting yourself recognize the full reality of the relationship, not just romanticizing the good parts. When I did this in my original journal, I ended up with over 20 pages of just pure venting. And it really helped me to see things clearly, like that one song, like, I can see clearly now. You know the song. It made me feel like that. And it's okay to be angry or sad while you're doing this. I'm not expecting you to be like, yep, this is how it made me feel. Nope, you're gonna probably be very mad. You're probably gonna be very sad. It's okay if you can't even make out the, the words because all you have are tear streaks on the paper. That's totally fine. No judgment because it's your journal. 
Feeling equals healing. Mm, I should put that on a bumper sticker. Next, I want you to gather all the small keepsakes that you aren't ready to let go of yet and put them in your journal. When I did this, I kept a Polaroid, a bracelet, and a birthday card in my original journal. And then after a couple months when I was finally ready to let go, I burned the Polaroid and I tossed the rest of the gifts. But keeping them in my journal in the meantime made me feel better. And it's hard letting things go. Like... Don't listen to a friend or family member when they're like, Oh my gosh, why are you still like crying over that? You're still sad about that? You should have been through that stuff out. No, it takes time. It's okay if you're not ready yet, and you'll know when the time is right. So until you're finally ready to let those things go, you can keep them in your journal just for you and you alone. You don't have to look at them every day or anything like that, but you can keep them there and know that when you're ready, you can let them go. Now it's time to talk about writing ideas. These will help you process your feelings, gain perspective, and move towards healing. Most people who quit journaling early come up with the same excuse. It's always the same tired excuse. It's, I just don't know what to write about. But one thing that can help you with this is by reading a companion book, some sort of book that encourages healing and introspection. My companion book was attached, and I definitely recommend that recommend what English um I definitely recommend that you read it if you haven't already because any sort of companion book will give you plenty of things to write about during your breakup I dedicated pages of my journal just writing about what the book was teaching me, like healing my attachment style, uncovering the attachment style, becoming more secure, and even empathizing with my ex and being less angry at him and at the breakup and at myself, just being more empathetic all around while also knowing to like solidify the boundary of distance. It really helped me understand why I was feeling so anxious and insecure after my breakup. And it even helped me realize that I was blaming myself for a lot of things that weren't even my fault. If you're not a reader though, that's okay because you can also watch a companion show, a show that's entertaining, yes, but it's also gonna make you self-reflect and analyze your own behavior in real life relationships. For me, those shows were Bojack Horseman and Insecure. And when you're watching the show, figure out what character that you can relate to most, like what flaws or struggles have you also experienced that the character is going through in the show. And when you're journaling this, it can really help you to figure out your patterns and see your patterns in a new perspective, in a new light, if that makes any sense. My characters were Princess Carolyn and Molly, or to give you a better perspective, I basically was Hachi from Nana. Another thing you could do is write about the friends or family members who support you during your breakup or just through hard times. This is practicing gratitude. So we're gonna call this the support star section because they're like a guiding light during tough times. Put pictures of the ones who love and support you with a few nice things about them. Writing about the people who are still there for you reminds you that love is still all around. This will keep you grounded. Next, you can make a section for reminders. This is where you'll write down meaningful advice you heard so you can look back and read it when you need encouragement. It can be anything from things you've heard in helpful YouTube videos, podcasts, quotes you see on Insta, read in books, or something your best friend said. Whatever stuck with you. Now, if you feel like there's still things that you want to say to this person, the next section is perfect for you. I call it Letters I Can't Send, inspired by Sabrina Carpenter's album, Emails I Can't Send. I feel like this is a pretty self-explanatory one. You're just writing out everything that you want to say to them, but you're not sending it because this is going to help you feel more at peace and help you maintain no contact, which is very important because if you're just letting it all bottle up and you're like oh i just i wish i had said it i wish i had said it i wish i had said it and you're not letting that shit out you're gonna end up like squidward in that one episode of spongebob there <laughs> now i'll have to stay here and enjoy myself <laughs> i'm not even gonna think about you know who as the you know what doing i don't care <laughs> just gonna relax i like writing letters on a full moon because they remind me to reset and reflect on what i have to let go I've written multiple of these letters. Sometimes I take out the pages and burn them after. Other times I just keep them in the journal. This is about creating closure within yourself. You can even write a letter to your future self or love letters to yourself you never received from your ex. Another idea is writing about the realizations you've made so far. I recommend doing this monthly even because post breakup clarity is real. Like how do you feel now versus the day of the breakup? Like, did you learn anything new about yourself since the relationship? Like, maybe there were times where you were tolerating disrespect and let it go on longer than it should have. Or maybe you, there were times where you got triggered, right? But instead of speaking up and communicating your feelings, you would just shut down. Be like, I'm fine. 
you would just stonewall. Or you would expect them to be a mind reader and when they weren't, you'd get mad. This isn't meant to be an expose on your ex or shaming yourself. It's just about looking at the situation and using it to learn and grow. This is about your journey and understanding how you can improve your future relationships, not about judging your past. Like for example, Gojo would always flirt with other girls when he thought I wasn't paying attention. And I definitely noticed, but I wouldn't bring it up because I was like, I can't risk getting into a fight and him leaving me. I can't risk being left behind. I should just be quiet. I should just be meek. I should just be silent. Was I silent or was I silenced? I silenced myself because I couldn't handle being left and abandoned. I don't want to risk a fight because if I risk a fight, he'll leave me. And then I was like, wait. I also would avoid speaking up in my childhood. That's all connected. This section is for your growth. So don't be afraid to acknowledge your strengths and your weaknesses. This next one is sad, but you could write about all the things you wish they said or did in the relationship. I feel like this helps to no longer idealize the person because a lot of the time we are building this person up in our head. We're making them seem greater than they actually are. And then when you're writing out the stuff that you wish that they said or did, it's like, damn, you realize they didn't do any of this stuff for me. And that's okay because it's not about wishing that they were somebody else. It's about recognizing what you deserve and what you want in a relationship and then you're creating space to get that thing that you want. You're making space for someone who can actually give it to you. Deja vu is a section to write about all the things you see that remind you of them throughout the day. Like seeing their car even though you know it's not them or when you think you caught a glimpse of them but then the person turns around and you realize it was just a stranger. Release that shit out on paper. You can't just be holding on to it all day. This is a safe space, okay? Every time you write it down, you are taking back a little bit of your power each time. And slowly but surely, the deja vu is gonna sting a little bit less every single time you write. Okay, this next idea is fun. Make a list of qualities your dream partner has. This will take the focus off your ex. Think of it as your qualifiers. You might even realize your ex didn't even meet most of them, and that's okay. You live and you learn. The list serves as a reminder of your own worth. You deserve someone who meets those standards and you don't have to settle for less. Another idea is listing out the qualities your ideal higher self has. Who are they? What are their habits, mindset, and lifestyle? My coach would ask me the same thing and she would make me write it out and I feel like this makes it more attainable. You're more likely to achieve improving yourself and just growing and becoming that higher version of yourself that you envision yourself to be because you're writing it down on paper. You're visualizing a clear path to success. You could even use pictures from books, magazines, prints online, movies, song lyrics, anything that gives you inspiration to improve yourself that you weren't able to find yourself. Like words that you couldn't come up with yourself, you can find them from media. This last one is pretty self-explanatory, but you should also just dedicate pages. I feel like the majority of your journal should just be pages and pages of expressing your feelings. It should just be simple diary entries. Write it all down or even draw it. It doesn't have to make sense, okay? There's no wrong way of going about it, whether it's writing down a single sentence or a single word or filling out a whole page. As long as you are expressing your emotions, you're doing a good job. Okay, so now that you have some ideas for what to write about, Let's dig a little bit deeper, okay? We're gonna get into these prompts. These require more introspection because there's a goal in mind. It's time to get real about your feelings, your hopes, your patterns. It's time to be real and brutally honest with yourself. Remember at the beginning of the video when I told you to write about all the things you disliked about the relationship? Now I want you to answer this question. Why did you tolerate, ignore, or allow it for so long, even when it didn't serve you? This isn't about self-blame, it's about taking accountability and self-reflecting. Like think of a time where you felt unfulfilled, hurt, or uncomfortable. What stopped you in that moment from speaking up or even leaving? Or maybe if, if you always got mad and you always left, what stopped you from waiting and actually communicating and not just storming off? Because when you think about these things, it's going to help you see a pattern in yourself. What was the most important lesson or takeaway from the relationship? Every single relationship, whether it's good or bad, teaches us something. So what experience have you gained from this relationship and what lesson will you carry with you into the future? Since the breakup, what are things you lost and things you gained? Put things in perspective. What did you learn about yourself from the relationship? You could think about how the relationship mirrored your strengths and weaknesses. Like with my ex, for example, I really liked how he could be very independent. Sometimes it was like hyper independent, which is, is not very good. But also, it was like, 
she was very independent and I liked that. I was like, dang, I wish I wasn't so clingy all the time. Like in your relationship, did you uncover any needs or desires in yourself that you weren't always aware of? What boundaries will you set in future relationships? Boundaries create space for your needs to be met without feeling guilty. What are you grateful for in this chapter? In a way, gratitude helps soften the hurt. Even if it's painful, use this moment of your life to figure out what this chapter is teaching you. What's one thing you accomplished today? It doesn't matter how small you think it is, the small wins still deserve to be celebrated. What are some deal breakers and non-negotiables you have when dating in the future? Write them down not from a place of fear, but from a place of self-worth. This is about defining what you won't compromise on because you value yourself. If you could choose, what would your happy ending look like? This is your chance to visualize what you truly want out of life. And it's okay if you think about your ex when you're writing this prompt because right now it's probably really hard to envision yourself with anybody else, right? But instead of writing your ex's name like in in the ideal future, in my perfect world, I'm with my ex, instead of writing their name, just write your dream partner. Because this is about creating a blueprint for the life and love that you want. And lastly, if you and your ex never got back together, why would that be such a bad thing? When I got asked this question, it really hurt to think about. And it was hard coming to the answer. It was hard figuring out my why, but it was really, really important to do so. By working through your why and getting to the root of the issue, you'll probably realize that you had some hidden fears that had nothing to do with your ex, but showed up in your relationships. And when you unlock those fears and you work through them, you can heal more deeply. You could even map it out visually to look something like this. This is a fake scenario, obviously, but you get the gist, like you get where I'm coming from. And if you don't fully, here are four more examples that you can pause to read yourself. Now I just gave you 22 ideas and prompts to conquer your heartbreak and create the ultimate breakup journal. So now you have no excuse but to write, Pookie. Get to work, babe. Chop, chop. You gotta get to work. This isn't about getting over someone. It's about getting closer to yourself. There's a powerful saying, as within, so without. One thing my coach said that really stuck with me is you can't manifest a peaceful environment externally if it's not coming from a peaceful environment internally. It might not feel like it yet, but a breakup journal can be the perfect way to take control of your healing, understand yourself better, and create a peaceful environment within. If you're intentional with it, this journal can help you become the version of yourself that you've always wanted to be, healed, secure, and free. So whether you're going through a friendship breakup, a romantic breakup, or you're just saying goodbye to an older version of yourself that you no longer want to be, a breakup journal can help. I can vouch for it. It's one of the only things that got me through mine. My doctor was like, I want to put you on antidepressants, girl. And I was like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. And after a while, my original journal, the OG, the queen herself, really helped me to feel normal again. And I'm hoping that yours can do the same for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, prove it by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below letting me know what ideas or prompts you plan to use in your very own breakup journal. Let me know if you're going to start one. Let me know if this was helpful. And just remember to take care of yourself. Have self-compassion. Don't beat yourself up. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. And I believe in you. You got this. Okay, bye. Bye.